God bless you all. God bless you all. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, Back to Basics Ministries, located here in Lithonia, Georgia, where Jesus Christ is Lord. And we just thank God for his blessings. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy. And we just love you all and thank you that you took the time out that you want to worship God today and you choose to worship with us here at Back to Basics Ministries. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. Uh, we've got a lot of people on and we've got testimonies and praise and, and giving glory and honor to God. And I'm uh, going to have a couple of selections from our special guest, Kevin Wilson. And then we're going to hear the word of God. And so we just thank God. We just thank God for each and every one of you. I want to play some songs um, uh, from our friend Kevin Wilson. And I just put on the um, screen here that we have the permission to play his songs. So we have Kevin Wilson's permission to play his songs. So we're going to hear two selections from Kevin Wilson. We're going to hear Born Again. Born Again. And then we're going to hear... Don't sweat, don't sweat the small stuff. Kevin Wilson, come on. Kevin said, come on, help me now. A brand new star. I'm clean now. The chain the sin have been taken away. I'm just like a newborn child. I'm born again.
wasn't that long ago If I learned anything If you gotta get back on the road Don't sweat this monster What time is the world? Everything has a way of working now It won't take too long If you just hold on Please come when times get tough Don't sweat this monster Sorry for myself. My thoughts are getting up around through my head. Mm -hmm. and this old man that I know walks up to me, puts his arm around me, and he says, Son, I think that. Wasn't that long ago <laughs> if I'd learned anything? If you gotta get back on the road, don't slip the small stuff. What time am I gonna love? Everything has a way to work now. It won't take too long if you just hold on. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That's Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. And um, praise God. I just sent Dustina a message. Didn't know I was country, did you, Dustina? Dustina says there's a little bit of country in every one of us. Hey, that's Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. The Kevin Wilson band. We were blessed, Dustina and uh, several others. We were blessed to meet Kevin in Indiana a couple of weeks ago. And I said, hey, Kevin, can I play your songs on our worship service on the online church? He said, oh, sure, sure, you have my permission. So I want Facebook, I want YouTube, I want all these people to know uh, that we have his permission. I will be sending you Facebook and YouTube. I'll be sending you the written permission uh, sometime this coming week. So that's Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. And you can uh, contact Kevin Wilson He's with the um, Spiritual High Ministries, and that's uh, in Kentucky. And you can, I, I put on the screen here, KevinWilsonBand.web.com. Uh, contact him on the web, KevinWilsonBand.web.com, or give Kevin a call, 606-526-6136. 606 5266136 Kevin Wilson is a man of God. He and his band, they sing praise unto the Lord and invite him for your next revival. Invite him to do a, a revival at your church. Revive him to your invite him to your ministry and you will surely be blessed. Praise God. You meet she, uh, Kevin Wilson and shake his hand one time. You just shake Kevin Wilson's hand one time and you will never ever ever be the same again. You'll never, ever, ever be the same again.
Praise God. So we're going to move along with the uh, online church. Praise God. I put a graphic up there. I was preaching the gospel last week in Wilmington, Delaware, where we ordained one of our back to basic school students. We ordained Minister Loretta Jackson to the gospel ministry. Now Loretta is duly ordained to the ministry. Praise God. She's ordained. We had a Holy Ghost service in Wilmington, Delaware, and we give God the praise. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot go any further without saying thank you, Terry Chiquito. Thank you, Terry. I love you, Terry. Thank you for filling in, for pinch hitting for me uh, for four weeks during the summer. I love you, Terry. You preach the word. You minister the word. You taught God's people. And we are highly appreciative of you, Terry. We are highly appreciative. I'll be calling, I'll be calling you early this week. And uh, we got a special blessing, Jackie and I, for you, ter uh, for you, uh, Terry. Praise God. We thank God for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Terry's <clears throat> messages <clears throat> are on YouTube, and uh, I still have to process uh, a couple of them and, and get them on. But Terry, we appreciate you standing in the gap and presenting the word, and a lot of people were blessed through your ministry. And so we want to be a blessing to you. Praise God. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to hear the word of God. It's time to hear the word of God. I'd like to read from Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to be looking at uh, verses. Well, we're going to start at verse 9. And we're going to go through verse 15. Matthew 6, verses 9 through 15 and we're gonna we're gonna uh, preach what Jesus says ladies and gentlemen we're gonna preach what Jesus says. that's all and that's what preaching is all about what does Jesus have to say what's God have to say to his people and then after the reading of the word we're gonna ask young Nathan Rainville to come and lead us in prayer and so uh, if you have your Bibles open or you've downloaded the scripture, the scripture is Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 9, going through verse 15. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That means holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. When you're praying this prayer, you're praying, Lord, let your kingdom come. Not my kingdom, not anybody else's kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. God's going to meet your every need. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I want you to remember that part. Uh, uh, some Bibles may read and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We're talking today about a very important subject. We're going to talk about the, the dangers of unforgiveness. The dangers of unforgiveness. We've got to forgive people their debts as God has forgiven us. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then Jesus says, and your Bible should be written in red letters. Red letters indicate that Jesus is talking. Whether you're in the uh, Matthew, Luke, uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or in the book of Revelation, when you see your letters written in red, that means Jesus is speaking directly. Verse 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Very important verse. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And here's another very, very important verse, verse 15. And we close out the reading with this. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's the reading of the Word of God from Matthew 6, verses 9 
through 15, we're going to ask young Nathan to come and lead us in prayer for this ministry today. Nathan Rainville, ladies and gentlemen. Dustina, is Nathan there? Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, you froze up for a minute on my side, so it wasn't working right. All right, here he is. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Nathan. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this day and for this online church. Lord, please be with us today. Help us to open our hearts to your message today and to apply it to our lives. Be with us as we go about our day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. He's a fine young man. Thank and so you. is his brother, Nikki. And so is his sister, Destiny. And I met uh, Nikki and Destiny and Nathan at Summer Fire in Indiana just a couple weeks ago. What a wonderful family. Our mother, we met them all. What a wonderful family. Praise God. I'm getting to meet some of you all and looking forward to meeting everybody. Thanks to Nathan. And as Nathan goes back to school, along with, along with his brother and sister, we're praying for them, praying for all the school children, praying for every family. Okay, we've just read the scripture. We've just had the prayer. The anointing is on us. So let's look at the message today, the dangers of unforgiveness. By the way, all of my messages will be uh, uh, downloaded onto the YouTube channel and also on my website. Uh, you also find these on my website, and that's www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. Uh, I'll be putting this up at the end of the service so you know where to go uh, and how to send me an email or how to stay in touch with the ministry. Praise God. Uh, we're looking at unforgiveness, ladies and gentlemen. One of the most dangerous things happening in America and the world today is unforgiveness. Uh, one of the most dangerous things happening with the church is the church is rolling on, but the church is full of bitterness, full of resentment, full of unforgiveness. And ladies and gentlemen, God has to deal with unforgiveness. And so I pray that you will listen carefully to this message today and 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 as Nathan prayed that we will open up our hearts to receive the word of God a lot of people when you start preaching about adultery or same-sex marriage or gambling or alcoholism or drugs they close their hearts they sit there but they're not really hearing but I want you to hear because this message might mean the difference between whether or not you get into heaven or whether or not you wind up in hell. Listen to me now. I don't have a heaven. I don't have a hell to put you in. I'm a preacher of the gospel, and I preach what the Lord puts on my heart to preach. Ladies and gentlemen, I just preached about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, um, a little bit longer because uh, um, Terry filled in the gap for about a month. And so maybe six weeks ago or so, I preached a message. It was entitled, the man who went to hell and lived to tell. The man who went to hell and lived to tell. You can find that on uh, my YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Leroy Carter. And in that message, uh, the message included the testimony of a man who died and literally went to hell. The Lord took him to hell and let him see what was going on in hell. And one of the things that this man saw, it's astonishing, it's astounding, was a preacher woman, a preacher. She had pastored the church for over 30 years, ladies and gentlemen. She led many people to the Lord. She preached the gospel. Many people got saved under her ministry. But this man discovered her in hell and asked the Lord, what is she doing in hell? And the Lord said, she is there she is there because she never forgave her husband. She carried bitterness for all those years 
all those years of prosperous ministry, she carried hardness of heart and bitterness in her heart toward her husband, and she could not find it in her heart to forgive her husband. And she was in torment in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, hell is a real place. It's a place that if you go there, there is no return. The Lord Jesus let this man go to hell. Then the Lord Jesus brought this man back to life. He had been killed in a car accident. And, and in the spirit realm, he went into hell, saw hell, and saw things, and gave a testimony. And that testimony is in my sermon entitled, The Man Who Went to Hell and Returned to, to Tell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Jesus even gave us a glimpse of hell in Luke 16. So it's real, and, and I want to appeal to you. I'm, re, I'm appealing to pastors and bishops and church leaders and church members. Many of you have been going to church for years. You sit up in church, and you, many of you are involved in powerful ministries, and I'm preaching to myself too. Ladies and gentlemen, if you harbor bitterness in your heart towards anybody, if you harbor resentment in your heart, if you harbor unforgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, you're on dangerous ground. It does not matter how much money you have given to the missionary society, how many churches you have built in Africa. It doesn't matter how many uh, blankets you have given to the hungry and the, the, the homeless. It doesn't matter how many food baskets you have taken to the poor. It doesn't matter how many bills you have paid. Uh, to help someone turn their light back on, their electricity back on, if you harbor bitterness and resentment and hatred and unforgiveness in your heart, ladies and gentlemen, there is no heaven. There is no heaven. And the scripture teaches us, we've just read the scripture, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. God will forgive you of your sins. And God's forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, is contingent. It rests upon your forgiving others. You may say, oh, no, no, that's not right, Pastor. God will forgive me. All I've got to do is confess my sins. Ladies and gentlemen, you better read your Bible. Read your Bible. Matthew 6, 15 says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespass. It's in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. I did not make this up. It's in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Read your Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, I want to invite you, or I want to invite you to join us in two more weeks on Wednesday, September 5th, and every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. I want you to I invite you to join me for International Bible Study, where we're taking Bible study to this nation and the nations. Nathan, we're going to start with Genesis. We're going to go through all the books of the Bible in 18 months. Every week, we're going to be into the Bible. We're not going to be teaching somebody's message or somebody's report or what somebody else thinks. We're going to be teaching people what the Bible thinks because there are many believers who do not know the Word of God. There are many people who are not being taught the Word of God. There are many people who need to study the Word of God. We're going to look at what God's Word says. So uh, go on my website and sign up for this class. It's free. The class is free. Now, if you want to take it for credit, we can work it out to it. You're working towards a degree. But the course is free, ladies and gentlemen. All you have to do is be online at 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday nights, and we're going to go through the Bible. We're going to teach what the Word of God says. There will be no excuse for anyone not knowing what God's Word says. Let's look at uh, five or six things that um, – or the dangers of unforgiveness. We're going to do it. look at five or six things, and then we're going to wrap it up. And before that, uh, somebody said, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. When you do not forgive somebody who hurts you, it's like you drinking poison and waiting for that other person to die. 
Well, <laughs> it doesn't take a rocket scientist to discover that if you drink the poison, the other person ain't going to die. You're going to die if you drink the poison. And so, number one, unforgiveness is progressive. In other words, when you don't forgive, things build up. Things build up. You go from one level of disgrace, one level of dishonor, one level of sickness, one level of disease, one level of condemnation. You go from one level to another. Unforgiveness is progressive. That is why when someone hurts you, offends you, harms you, does something against you, you need to forgive them right away. Don't let it fester. Don't let it, oh, I know there's some people listening now. You have let it fester. Well, you can, uh, 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 I'll stop her from festering right now. You can stick a pin in it right now and let the pus drain out. I know that sounds gross and nasty, but you can stick a pin in that unforgiveness and let the pus drain out of you. Some of you need to let the pus drain out of you because you've become so infected. Because for some of you have harbored uh, bitterness in years. Well, Pastor Carter, you don't know what he did to me. You don't know. You don't know my story. You don't know what he did to me 10 years ago. Or you don't know what happened to me five years ago. Or you don't know what happened when I was a kid. Or you don't know uh, uh, what happened when I was abused. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that if we do not forgive men and women their trespasses, God will not forgive our sins. It's in the Bible. There's no way you can redact that or edit it or twist it around. No matter, and, and, and hey, ladies and gentlemen, you can, you can uh, unfriend me and go to another ministry, but this Bible does not change. You can change ministers. You can change online churches. You can change Bible teachers, but the Bible will not change. The Word of God is pure. The Bible says every word of God is pure, and so we praise God. Unforgiveness is progressive. Listen to this. First, there is a hurt. It starts with a hurt. Somebody hurts you. That hurt turns into anger. Then that anger turns into bitterness. See the progression? Then that bitterness turns to unforgiveness. And then finally, death. Death of the relationship. What begins as a hurt over an offense will escalate if we do not forgive. We see a lot of this in marriage. We see a lot of this in marriage. That is why the divorce rate is almost 60%, almost 60% in America. Of all the couples getting married, over 60% wind up getting divorced. Now, I'm not condemning anybody who's been divorced. I'm not knocking you. A lot of marriages don't work out, but a lot of marriages can work out if people would forgive. Forgive that first offense. Forgive that second offense. Well, you don't know how many times he cheated on me. You don't know how many times I got sick and tired of uh, seeing him drunk. I don't, you don't know how many times he's got high on drugs. Well, you've got to forgive and forgive and forgive. Oh, no, 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 ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying you have to stay there. You have to stay in that marriage. But you've got to forgive. You don't let that bitterness become progressive. Don't let that unforgiveness become progressive. So I'm going to repeat that. First, there's a hurt. That hurt turns into anger, then to bitterness, then to unforgiveness, and finally death, death of the relationship. What begins as a hurt over an offense will escalate if we do not forgive. But there's more to it. Listen, there's more. Number two, unforgiveness causes us to live with accumulating guilt. There are a lot of people. Many are sitting up in church right now. They are just as guilty. I hope the pastor doesn't preach about homosexuality. I hope the pastor doesn't preach about uh, same-sex marriage. I hope the pastor doesn't preach about uh, divorce. I hope the pastor doesn't preach about adultery. I hope the pastor doesn't preach about drinking. I hope the pastor doesn't preach about drugs. I hope he bypasses my area of hurt and pain. I hope he doesn't preach about it. If we do not forgive others for their sins and offenses against us, we do not receive God's forgiveness, cleansing, and release from sins we've committed. You can fast for 
10 years. You can fast and pray for 10 years. And you can pray. You can pray in tongues. You can sing your praise and, pr and prayer unto God. But if there's unforgiveness in your heart, God's not going to hear you. All that other stuff is, is religious. It's religiosity. It's, it's like uh, uh, Jesus told the, the, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, he said, you're like whitewashed sepulchers. You're painted up graves. You've got dead man's bones inside of you. You go through the motions of religion, but you don't have life in you. Number three, unforgiveness produces stunted, limited growth. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many Christians who are stunted. They've been born again for 50 years, and they're still third-grade Christians. Still third-grade Christians. Still, they, they've been saved for 50 years and still don't know the books of the Bible. They're still third-grade Christians. They still don't know what, what, how to find the book of Nahum. They know nothing about the book of Habakkuk. They know nothing about uh, 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 the Sermon on the Mount. They know nothing about deliverance. They know nothing about spiritual warfare because they have stunted their growth because in their heart of hearts, they cannot forgive the ones who hurt them, but yet they're going around saying, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm saved, I'm born again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're born again, there ought to be some fruits coming from your life and my life too. If I claim I'm born again, somebody ought to see a change inside of me. If I say I'm born again, I've got to walk in unforgiveness. Well, Pastor Carter, I'm going to repeat this to you. You just don't know what they did to me. You weren't there and you have no clue what they did to me and my children or to me and my family. Yes, yes, no, I don't know. I don't know, but I know what the Bible says, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, for if you forgive Men, their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. For if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I know this is tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got to obey the word of God. Every word of God is pure, and God wants to deliver us. Limited growth because of unforgiveness leads to limited joy. You wonder why the church looks so sad. I mean, long-faced, sad-faced Christians, and we see them all over the nation, all over the world. Everywhere I go, I see long-faced, sad-faced Christians. You try to pump them up with joy and praise, and ain't nothing happening because they have unforgiveness in their hearts. Many have secret sins in their hearts. Many still harbor bitterness towards somebody. Many still hate their parents, hate the uh, place where they were born. They hate the uh, uh, person they're married to. They hate what uh, someone did to them in high school. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to forgive them and let them go because unforgiveness produces limited joy, limited blessing, limited peace, and limited ministry. Your ministry can't even grow because of unforgiveness. I know a lot of people struggling in the ministry and wondering, why can't my ministry grow? How come so-and-so's ministry has blossomed? How come so-and-so is nationally, nationally known or internationally known? And I've been working just as hard as that person. I give just as much as that person. Well, test your heart. The Bible says, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any bitterness any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Some of us don't want God to search us because we know even before we say, search me, O Lord, we know there's something there that ought not to be there, so we ought to just come clean. Number four, we're looking at five or six, well, there are actually six things that unforgiveness does. Unforgiveness makes our world progressively smaller. Each offense that remains unforgiven leads to a damaged or broken relationship. If you don't forgive your parents, your children, your boss, your neighbor, your pastor, your church, and others, you're living in a small, narrow world of broken relationships. Number five, 
Unforgiveness causes us to live in a prison of our own making. We make our own prison through unforgiveness. By the way, if you want the, a hard copy of, of this message, I'll be glad to send it to you. Send me an email or text me, and I'll, I, I need your email. That'll make it better. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness causes us to live in a prison of our own making. When we hold someone in the prison of our unforgiveness and judgment, we become like a jailer who has to spend all his time focusing his attention on the prison cell and the person who is held there. The jailer can't do anything else but focus on the prison cell and the people in that prison. And when, and when we do not forgive, we spend all the precious time God gives us and we focus on the person who, person who hurt us and we focus on the hurt. And that's why so many ministries cannot grow. That's why so many Christians cannot grow. That's why so many people cannot grow. God's got great blessings for us. He's just waiting to shower us with blessings. But he can't give us blessings if we harbor unforgiveness. And then number six, unforgiveness eventually develops into bitterness, which is like a cancer of the soul. Please listen carefully to this. Unforgiveness. If you don't forgive people who have hurt you, who harmed you, no matter what they did to you, if you don't forgive them, it eventually develops into bitterness, which is like a cancer of the soul. Ladies and gentlemen, it is true, and doctors will tell you, many cancers, many cancers, I'm not saying all cancers, many cancers can be attributed to bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. I'm going to repeat that. Many cancers. Look at pancreatic cancer. Look at cancer of the liver. Uh, 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 in many areas, kidney failure. Uh, many times the internal organs shut down through disease because of unforgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't forgive people, it shows. It shows in our internal organs. It shows in our bodily functions. Some people can't have a, a regular bowel movement. They're irregular uh, because of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will cause hardening of the arteries. Unforgiveness will cause uh, 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 liver failure, will cause uh, not all liver failure, but it will cause liver failure, and it causes cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many people today, they have cancer because of unforgiveness. If we continue to allow unforgiveness to fester in us, it produces results in our internal organ, even in our body, even in our skin, in our complexion. Uh, you can see it. The cancer of bitterness will grow and eat away at our character, our personality, our faith, and even our health, resulting in physical and mental illness. Many people today are mentally ill because of unforgiveness, because all they think about is the person who hurt them back in 1975. All they can think about is that first husband and what he did. All they can think about is that child and what that child did. All they can think about is that man who had, uh, abused her, uh, her on the job. All they can think about is that person. And ladies and gentlemen, God says, forgive. Forgiven. Well, Pastor Carter, you know, don't know how hard it is to forgive. Oh, I know how hard it is to forgive. I'm human just like you. But the Bible says that if I regard iniquity in my heart, he won't even hear me. I know that's in the Bible. If I know in my heart that I have unforgiveness and bitterness, God won't even hear me. And so forgiveness means to give freedom to the person, to pardon the person who offended you. Give them freedom and give up all the claims you have to get back on them. Give them their freedom. Give up every claim you have to get back on them, to punish them. Give it all up. Give it up to God. Release that person. Why? Because when Jesus died on the cross, ladies and gentlemen, when he stretched his hands out wide, when they stretched his hands out wide, we heard Jesus on the cross saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
And because Jesus prayed that prayer, God has to forgive us when we repent. When we repent. So forgiveness means you release a person from prison. And we can release a person from prison by saying, I forgive them. And then forgive them and walk away from them. Walk away. You don't have to stay in that relationship. You don't have to maintain a relationship with that person. You don't even have to stay friendly with them. Just don't be bitter and don't uh, uh, act, act out of resentment. You can walk away from that person and never see that person again and live freely if you forgive that person. But if you walk away carrying bitterness in your heart, then it's going to result in stress. It's like drinking a cup of poison. It's walking away from a person without forgiving them. It's like drinking a cup of poison. You will wait for that person to fall, but the one who will fall will be you. Let's look at some misconceptions about forgiveness. Number one, you hear people say, forgive and forget. Well, you forgive, but you don't forget. And in this sense, you don't forget what they did so that when they come back, you're not going to let them do it again. But then when we say forgive and forget, we forgive them, and we don't let that offense harm us again. Some people say, I have to feel forgiveness. No, 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 no. You do not have to feel forgiveness. We do not walk by feelings. We walk by faith, faith in the word of God. The word of God does not say uh, forgive them when you feel like it. No, or when you feel it, no, you forgive them no matter what they've done. Some people say forgiveness will make me a doormat. Oh, no, no, no. Forgiveness will make you a mighty man, mighty woman, mighty child of God. Some people say, I have to have an ongoing relationship with the person. Oh, no, no, no. You forgive them, and you can walk out of their lives, and you can let them go. Let them go their way. And now let's look at what are some reasons why we don't forgive. Number one, we want people to come to us first and ask us to forgive them. There are times you've got to go to that first person and forgive them. We look for signs of repentance on their part and judge accordingly. No, no, no. Some people will never repent. They will hurt you but never repent. But you've got to forgive them. Number three, we hold on to justified unforgiveness. In other words, Pastor Carter, you don't know what they did to me. And I'm justified in harboring this resentment because it hurt. I can still feel the pain. Well, when you forgive them, let the pain go and walk away, and you will be healed. A lot of you will be healed. A lot of people are not healed because they harbor unforgiveness. Then some people say, we think they need to be taught a lesson. Ladies and gentlemen, when you don't forgive someone because they need to be taught a lesson, that's harboring bitterness in your heart. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Forgive all who have offended you. Forgive them from your heart, not with your words, not with your head. Let's forgive them, ladies and gentlemen. And then after we forgive everyone, then let's repent for the sin of unforgiveness and watch, 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 ladies and gentlemen. You'll be healed in the name of Jesus. Watch how quickly your healing comes. Watch how quickly that promotion comes. Watch how quickly that blessing comes. When you forgive the ones who hurt you, watch what God will do. Remember what the scripture says, Matthew 6, 14 to 15, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Let us pray. Father God, I pray for all those under the sound of my voice, whether they're listening live or by the recording. And I ask that you help each one to forgive anyone and everyone who has hurt them in any way. Help us to forgive anyone or anyone or everyone who has ever hurt us, whether those persons are still alive or are dead, 
we forgive them. Help them, Lord, to confess as an act of my will, I forgive so-and-so and call their name. I forgive them for what they have done and help us to release them unto you because we're convicted by the word of God. We've read the word of God. We've heard the word of God. Your word says, if we do not forgive men their trespasses, you will not forgive ours. And in the Lord's prayer, you said, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass, who, who are our debtors or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, Lord, we also repent. We repent for harboring unforgiveness. I repent, Lord God. Forgive me for harboring unforgiveness. Now, Father, heal the people. Heal us, Lord God. Pour out your healing upon us. Pour out your healing upon the people. And we are healed in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. And I praise you, Lord. I want to listen. I want you, everyone, to listen right now uh, to this song by Kevin Wilson. And it's called A Place to Forgive Me. Kevin Wilson. Then we'll come back and conclude after Kevin Wilson. God, praise God. That's Kevin S. Wilson singing that song, A Place to Forgive Me. We're going to be playing a lot of songs by Kevin Wilson, Spiritual High Ministries. We have permission. These songs are played by permission from Kevin. Kevin gave me personal permission to play his songs so that we do not violate any copyright uh, laws. Praise God. Praise God. So you can contact 
Spiritual High Ministries, Kevin Wilson, or, or go on Kevin Wilson, Kevin S. Wilson Band.web.com. I have the uh, message on the screen, Kevin S. Wilson Band.web.com, or give him a call at 606 526 6136. He's over there in Kentucky waiting to hear from you. Purchase his CDs. Purchase his CDs. Invite him to your next uh, uh, worship service. Invite him to a revival. And Kevin will be a blessing to you as he is a blessing to me. Praise God. Well, praise God. That was a mighty, mighty anointed message. A mighty anointed message today. And we thank God for uh, what he has done. We thank God and give him the glory and honor and praise. That message was entitled, was entitled, The Dangers of Unforgiveness. And wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the United States of America, just take time right now. And if you're not saved, ask the Lord to save you. Ask the Lord to save you. Oh, you might say, Pastor, what must I do to be saved? Well, the scripture says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. Get saved today. And if you want uh, personal uh, counseling, you need counseling on salvation, then I invite you. I invite you to contact me. I'm going to put our information on on the board uh, so that you can contact me with your inf- with with your information, with your questions. We lead you in prayer, counsel you on salvation, and you can contact me at Back to Basics Ministries. Here's my address or my phone numbers. You see them on the screen. Call me at 404-205-1101 or call me at 770-559-9710 or Go on the website. This website is awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, we're starting we're starting up the Bible study September 5th. That's only two weeks from now. Your homework assignment, start reading the book of Genesis. I want you to start reading the book of Genesis. We're going through the Bible in 18 months. You'll be a walking Bible. Praise God. We're going to stay online and minister to one another, but I'm going to stop the recording God bless you. You'll find these recordings on YouTube and on the website.